So I need to be as quick as possible on the slide tomorrow. So watch out for my kids. <laughs> I love you. All right. So conversations with Caroline this week, we need to just get all these job descriptions, how we think that they need to be, and then somebody besides myself is going to the town the meeting. Would that be you? Maybe. <laughs> I got a play child. Okay. Or D, maybe I can do that. So what we need to do is go through each one of the, um, the uh, job descriptions and make sure that we're all okay with the job descriptions and any of the changes that we had talked about, making sure that they're, they're in there. Um, and then we have another thing to, to, to do with Celia, but we want to keep this as brief as, as possible here. Um, do, you have, does, do you guys have your own copies of this, or no? Are we just going These are the only two copies. You have a set, and then I printed a set. I was trying to keep copies to a minimum. But I have reviewed them and left comments. Online. Yeah, right. and oh, that's um, true, but we didn't print comments. So. so, should we have one of us make sure that we, we do that, or how do how do we want this to work? Um, let me see if I can pull it up the phone book. Did you guys look at the? I looked at it on Friday, and, and so there, there's some of them that honestly I don't, I don't feel that that need, and I, and I didn't get a chance to see your one blur, but I know I had. I think the teen camp one was the one that we need the most work on. Right, and that's where most of my right. comments are focused. So, um, and I can probably review it and give you my comments on that one. So, if you if you guys want to look at, I, why don't we start with the camp Raleigh director? I think we'll go through the easiest ones quickly. I honestly, I had nothing, I had nothing under the director job. I think we changed a couple of things with Caroline and um, I took out I think one item that said and teen camp, right? It was the, the director right. with Go teen camp. So we, yeah. so we already took that out. Um, and this was added after our last meeting. It must be available all eight weeks. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, so for, for me, I mean, Caroline and I had a chat about the, the, the salary and we kind of went through that because that that money turns out to be a little bit um, below, but we'll, our, what our budget is, but so that is a good thing, so. <laughs> but that's for $600 per week. But, yeah. And it's below our budget amount, which allows them to do pre-camp work with the extra funds. True. So that's six times eight So do you, does anybody here have anything that they saw on there that needed change? Because I, I went through all that and I, I, was, I was happy with everything else. So director position. And we changed the time also. The time was like 7 to 5, so we changed the time to reflect camp hours of 7 to 5 30. So that happened. Okay? Are we, are we good with this? Yeah? I, I'm so, good with that right now. So well, well, let's. How does that I, work? I'm having trouble logging in. Oh. Um, so I might just. Um, oh, all right. Hold on. Um, so I, I want to make sure that we are looking at what Celia had for um, comments to make sure that we've, we've Did you addressed have any them. Any comments under the camp rally director? I don't think so. I think I won't get to the Yeah, yeah. Um, but I do have one question. Participation in the meetings of the Recreation Committee starting in May. So we're expecting them to be here and come to our May and June meetings. Mm -hmm. We're paying them for that, correct? It is included in the salary. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, Hence the salary. <laughs> now we did not say that in the assistant director, so I don't know if that's something that we want. I I don't know. It, should it say that the director is required to be there or their designee? Because they could send the assistant director. 
Yeah. But I, I, think I think we want this, especially if the staff hasn't been hired. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm good with keeping that. Well, right. We did not say that for the team camp director. And I don't, I don't know if we necessarily mm -hmm. need to. Right. Because we have pretty <coughs> much scheduled their thing, so we can reach out to, if there's nobody in place yet, we can do that, I would think. My one, question, my one other question is, is that, um, I don't know how to put it in words <laughs> for the camp director. Last year, they seem to do a lot of off-campus running, which we got, um, which was built there. So is there anything down here that says, um, like, I think it was um, that no purchases can be made without yep. the approval the yep. of yep. somebody higher up. Yeah, yep. approved by the chair. Okay. Yep. What about the age? For the rec, the rec director is 21. It's on the yes. back, too. Um, um, yeah. yeah, there's a second. There's oh, a, oh, yeah. So it seemed to be mostly the team camp yeah. director that you had comments about, which had mostly to do with hours and the reporting structure. So um, I wanted to go, let, let's, I had a question about that, about okay. supervisor <coughs> or, so I think we're good with this. Which um, one is that? The camp director. I think we were all pretty good with that. So no, no real changes. So do we need to just say we're we're? Uh, if you're fine with that, then yes, I think a motion would be helpful. We already approved by the board. So well, I don't know if that person was approved by the board. I have. To or do we just do one for the? Um, let, let's get to all of them and then you okay. can do them as, as a whole. Did you change okay. the the camp time? Seven thirty to five thirty. Yeah. I think yeah. So that was. Okay. So, so are these copies correct? Oh, yeah. That's what okay, I need to have. That's my okay. latest copy. Okay. Okay. Should I make sure that that's all? If that's okay. Same. Then. Yeah. All right. So for the for so so my question on here is supervisor for the assistant director. Okay. In the supervisor role should that just be just only be rec director, but or. Um, I would say in the, uh, you know, or maybe you could say in the absence of the director, we, um, or maybe I just like maybe rec director being listed first. Maybe. I guess I, I just want to be careful with what we put there because um, it goes back to committee members individually should not be asking any of the employees to do anything yeah. unless directed by the whole committee to say this person is in charge of making sure that the director knows to do whatever. Otherwise, it, you know, it's really important that we have, you know, it's, um, otherwise it's confusing and it's not necessarily known from the director that the person is speaking on behalf of the committee or that they're like acting on their own about what they feel is the appropriate thing. So um, I just want to be careful with what we put there that we're not putting, you know, um, it, even to put the co-chairs, like, you know, somebody has to, it, I think it's probably helpful that it's like something besides director, you know, they do okay. report to the director. But it may very well be that somebody else is that else is asking them to do something. Um, to my mind, it's you know. I guess I guess I I'm just looking. I think in order, and I don't know if that really matters if I'm being picky. But well, I, I guess my first thing would be they're obvious. They're they're first reporting to the rec director, right? First, so I don't know if we just want to move it, and then and then the other three. I guess I just have thinking. First well, right. I'm not sure how it's necessary it is. Okay. I think the. I guess the question is, how much will the assistant director be operating um, in the absence of the director? And something might come up when the director is not there. If right. the director is going to be there for all the hours that possibly anything could happen, then I think it's a moot point. Right. But if the team, if the assistant director is going to be there managing things and the director is not there. And that can possibly get, then who are they reporting to and who could possibly be asking them to do something? 
Okay. Um, which so, you could say the Recreation Committee and or Select Board. Um, I, I, it's just really important for this committee to understand that individuals should not just be running around, you know. I had an idea, so I thought I'd drop by camp and tell you to remember to do whatever, because that wouldn't be appropriate, and it'll be overwhelming for the director, and it could be confusing, and, and all those things. So with all that... So that being it, said, um, what does it say exactly? Yeah, well, it just it just said chairs of the Ronald's River Committee, slash rec director, and then select board. So I would put it in order, rec director, yes. okay. comp, and, and okay. who's doing that one? I, and you want to do mine? <laughs> well, <laughs> as long as I get one good copy, it, it doesn't <coughs> matter. Um, so, reports okay. to the rec director, um, and the director's and then, <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So that I don't think it's appropriate to call it the chairs unless this group is delegating to the chairs that it is the chair's duty to interact with the director or the assistant director. That, that I believe was yeah, a true statement for last summer. Well, so... Because you have, you have under the camp, the chairs of the Rollins Road Recreation Committee is under the camp probably director or supervisor. Okay, so, you know, if that's been the will of the body and that's been status quo, then that's fine. I would still put rec director first. Yeah. Because that is the, you know, more immediate, immediate person. Right. Um, and you have the change of time, right? The 735, 300 hours. <coughs> Sorry. That whole conversation, I get the we need to have a defi defined committee members who are overseeing the staff and not to overstep. We go through our own chain of command. Right, just like anything else, nothing's really you know the will of this committee unless it's voted to be the will of this committee. And if it's in the minutes, then it's not confusing who's in charge of what duty and whether or not somebody had the authority to do something. Um, so I think that's a good idea to reiterate or um, reinforce, or we can take out. Um, we can call it the um, the recreation committee delegate um, with you know S in parentheses, and that way you can decide it in future and change it in future. No, that's a good idea. Um, Did you want to change the um, camp rally director then? Um. <laughs> <laughs> but I see, my point is, is if we have you guys doing the interviews, you might as well stay as the point person because we're going through the process with them. So maybe that's how it is now. I think what she's saying is. What we're trying to establish right here is so you want to this every year. Yes. So at some point in time, if the new committee wants to <coughs> make somebody besides the chairs <laughs> the point person, and I think I heard her say that at some meeting we should make sure we get a vote, make sure we're all in consensus with it. Well, yes, before camp starts. Right now, the focus is on get the job descriptions written. And yes, at some point soon, you ought to vote to decide who that is. You might want to wait for Dean and Denise to be back for that. It does, I don't think that has to be decided yeah, no. tonight. I think the point is just that you know, if you call them delegates, then they, um, I think it makes the point clear that they have to be um, delegated to do that. They have to be given the authority by the board, by the committee to do that, and it also gives you flexibility in future years for that person to change. I like that. Okay. So then I have recreation committee delegates with in parentheses and select <coughs> board for the recreation um, for the camp for the camp rally director. Um, and I, and I found all the job functions. That was the, the only question mark I had for us 
was the 21. So we had somebody that wasn't 21 last year. And I, and I think for the assistant director position that we need to be careful about that, that it might be difficult to hire somebody that is, you know. Um, so you could put must be so 18. 18. I, I think must be 18, 18 and preferred, 21. 21 preferred, right, is what. And that was, that was really all I had. I don't know if you want to look at that. Yeah. Anybody else have anything from that they want to bring up? Check mark, check mark. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is so. Let's go to team. Um, you guys have your team. So this is. I mean, both Celia and I kind of went went through. Um, I don't know. So. So team camp director, we had that conversation that um, it's, well, first the hours are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and, and the hours for that camp are 9 to 4. Oh, so this is fine. Yeah. Yeah, so that so, needs to be correct. Yeah, so it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then 9 to 4. And I don't think we need to talk about, I don't know if you were going to say that, but I'm trying to <laughs> think what you're going to say, but the 4th of July week is a different just because, so that I think that can be said in an interview. That but I was in July. Does it need to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or can it say three day week? I would go with our Monday, Wednesday, Friday right now. Well, are you good. just cutting out Wednesday that week, or are you? Mm -hmm. We're doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday that week. Because of the holiday. The holidays start Wednesday okay. and Friday, and Friday when we're having camp. You might put an asterisk maybe after the hours and put like um, you know Independence Day holiday schedule. Um, I don't think we need to go that personally. Well, I that's in, fine. In, in I just interview. I could you know in the interview it would be so Fourth of July is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Is that it's fine as long as it's addressed and you know that they're agreeing to that. So I would put it in the offer letter yeah. that they're signing on. So that's how I have and Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 to 4. So they don't need to be there for any reason to overlap, like if the kids come early or late, because they have extra, the team camp director has extra hours built in. I think we have 24, 25 hours. I just didn't that was for, I believe that was for planning. planning and yeah. But I just didn't know, like, can they walk away at four o'clock if there's still kids there? Or do they need to stay until the last one's picked up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well but you ought to walk away. Well, but you ought to have some kind of policy that they are aware of so that it's not a question. <coughs> Same the job description for when this remain until yeah, like, all students are picked up. Or release home. <coughs> I think that's a good idea if you don't have it written elsewhere. Because otherwise it says, you know, camp ends at four, so you know Do we know if that's what it says in our handbook? With our with our employee handbook. If there's a, if if the employee handbook says that you're covering, it's fine. And I could I couldn't be sure of that right now. So my concern was is that last year we did have one camper all seven weeks to do pre or post care and that falls on to the camp Raleigh staff then to watch that camper because they're paying for a slot mm -hmm. yeah and that means that maybe another camp Raleigh person can't have that slot because of our ratio or does it I don't know well I, mean, I don't think we're gonna have a lot of those you know yeah it was just one last year right. And that was only because they had younger kids and were out of town. Right. So, uh, I mean, I don't know. We, uh, and the teenager would fall into the ratio, right? Because like, they don't really need to be watched. Mm -hmm. like the other ones do. And I would just, I don't know, for me, the hours, I would say a 
few minutes before, like quarter of nine to quarter after. You're paying them for a half an hour a day. And then that they're there if the bus gets there before nine to talk to the bus driver and confirm they're going to wherever they're going. Mm -hmm. And then they're there for at least 15 minutes after to make sure that all the kids leave. It says required to perform daily check-ins. So can it say check-ins and check-outs? That would be good. That all, be good. all check-ins and check-outs. And if you're responsible for all of them, then that would, mm -hmm. I think that's a good ad. Could you? Yeah, which one? Where is that, that line there, Lauren? Let me see. So, as we're talking about hours, um, I just want to note all of the salaries, all of the pay amounts, could be construed differently. And I did the best I could given um, the budget, but the budget had extra hours worked in for different things. And for salary people, you've done the director and the assistant director for Camp Raleigh. If there's a training week of two days, how do you pay somebody's salary for that? That's included. It's said it, I mean, it was included in the salary. We gave them extra. Well, money. so are they not really getting paid for those two days in April because when they do camp, you know, their out their salary wage is supposed to be like big enough to compensate for that. Like, do you see what I mean? Because it's it's hard to you know. You just need to be careful because salary implies that they can do more, but it also implies that they're getting a regular wage paycheck kind of thing. I'm not sure how so. D did it for Camp Raleigh, but I know for Teen Camp, we added an extra week of pay. So instead of doing it seven weeks, we added eight weeks so that they would get an extra week to spread out. So, so how does that... It is built into the budget. Well, okay, so I, I believe that the budget money is there. I'm just wondering how, um, you know, if you have two days in April, are they really not getting paid for the two days in April until, you know, camp starts? <coughs> because that's, you know, I don't know. And, and if that's the case, I'm not sure that that's okay. Right. Um, but we, we do say on the director, and, and but it's not in the assistant director, but the director position, we say, um, is expected to attend meetings in May. And so that is, so basically I think the, the salary starts like in May. Well, it kind of means that to me too, but um, are you budgeting for that? I, I guess I just want you all to be really careful about what days are people working? When are they getting paid for them? And what is that equal? And how does that compare to your budget? Just so that you're not surprised and have a problem later. Um, so we need to keep an eye on the hours as they come in. So at the end of the summer, we're not above Well, the and hour. it's not even so much hours because in the summer, if they work 42 hours, their salary, they get paid for whatever the salary is for that week, and it's not a problem. I'm more concerned about the things that aren't falling in the eight weeks of camp. Because if you're budgeting for eight <coughs> weeks of, of camp salaries, it's easy to pay them eight consistent right. weeks of pay, and that's great. Um, it's really hard to say that two days in April or May were covered under what you got paid in, or what you're going to get paid for, which is a flat, regular amount in June and July. You know what I'm saying? So. So what I'm saying is, you, you, you know, you could do something like maybe there's a meeting stipend and you get paid $30 a meeting or something, and, and you're adjusting your salary in a way to compensate for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the, the, there's a way to pay them then, which is an, an hourly wage because they're not hourly employees, they're salary, but they're not really starting their salary yet because they're not really doing their regular thing yet, but it's a way to pay them for what they're doing. This is a really the 11th hour to bring that up, and I right. apologize for that. <laughs> you know, I just, it didn't come to my attention until I was looking at the budget, and, and I saw this, how you constructed it. Yeah. So. How about the 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
how many at 11 versus how many at 8? Like, what, what, like. Yeah, you have to make that happen. Well, we had everybody, I can tell you right off the top of my head, we had everybody at 10. Everybody started at 10, and we had three at 11. So there were no in betweens. It was okay. one or the other. So if everybody's at 10, 11, you're fine, right. as long as you're, you know, all the people that you think are coming back at 11, you know, there aren't more of them, and that everybody that you think you're going to hire for 10 will really take it for 10. You know, if, if you think you can manage it within that, but you are also setting the expectation that, you know, nobody would be willing to work for nine. Right. And not, I mean, not that there's a problem with that necessarily. If, if that, those are your values. It's kind of weird if you're hiring somebody back from last year that made 10 last year and they're making 10 this year. I completely get that. But then you're hiring a new person who's never, doesn't have any experience and they're getting 10 too. But yet this, it says 10 to 11. So at what point does somebody qualify? But there's not enough money in the budget to pay all of the experienced people 11. Right. And do we get those counselors back if they're not going to make a slight increase? Are they going to say, no, thank you, I'll go somewhere else? Well, you can also give the $10 an hour people that were here last year, like ten twenty-five right. instead of 11 so that there's some kind of goodwill, yes, we valued you, mm -hmm. welcome back kind of thing. Um, not to say you have to. But I would definitely suggest not paying somebody without any experience the same as you pay somebody with experience. So do you think it should go 9 to 11? I don't know. I just, I like the way it's worded because it gives us the flexibility. And then if people can ask us, they can inquire, what is your range? Oh, so not even put it on there at all? Yeah. Yeah. I believe it that depends okay. on previous experience. Mm -hmm. It varies on previous experience. And then they can put it on their application and maybe somebody will come in at 9. And Somebody will come in at 11.5 if they're experienced. I think that's a good idea. I just, I'm, I'm just slightly worried because I just know that like Summers Road puts it out there, like we're hiring people right here at nine bucks an hour. So if they look at our page and people are lazy and <laughs> they just see, oh. well, it doesn't even tell me how much it is, but oh, then how about nine dollars an hour? Or nine. Right. Right. And we even talked about I mean, we sort of talked about returners at any time. I mean, I'm all for offering newbies nine fifty. You know, if they're sixteen, I think what we did, what I did the first year that we hired people was anybody who was sixteen was me. I you know, I gave them. I don't even know. What I gave them. 750, 725. I mean, that was pretty low down there. But um, if they had, you know, if they were 18, they got a little bit more money. If they had, you know, experience, they got a little bit more money. So that's kind of how I all figured it out. So, yeah, I mean, you know, if we're gonna. I, I'd like to pay our kids. You know, I don't. I don't know if we did budget for 1025 per like fee. Counselor. It's at an average of 10.30. So one right. of the things, like, what, I like your idea, and I don't know if it's too late in the year to think about this, but to create a pay structure where um, you consider that it opens at 8.50 an hour or, or $9 or whatever you think the base yeah. opening rate is, and then you get, pick a number, 25 cents or something for each year yeah. of experience, mm -hmm. for each year over 16 that you are, for whatever your criteria are, you can give people more money for incidental things. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. So I, if you have a license, even though you're, you know, you yeah. get an extra 20, you know, not that you right. use it, but it shows that you have some commitment to responsibility. Right. So, you know, I'm going to be doing most of that hiring thing if we want to have like the 16 year olds at 950 an offer of 950 and then or 975 and then if we want our our returners to get a quarter raise we need to i need to ask if that would fly but um i mean i i like it but i think a number i think a number i, I just feel like 
there's a number there to see quick. I think people are just going to be like, eh. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I'm not going to apply there. I don't know how much money they're making. So that's, that's my that's my take. So we can put a range in there. We can say nine to eleven. We can do that. Right. We can do nine to eleven and just have the range. Mm -hmm. Starting at nine is kind of the same thing, but people could be hopeful that it you know like they don't really know how high it goes. Right. So are we good with that yep. as a group? So it's money. We should make a motion. As I thought that earlier this year. I'll make a motion. So he makes a motion to start uh, counselor salaries at nine dollars an hour. Well, no, we're not making that motion. We're listing. Oh, okay. Counselors salaries, right? To start just to list. We don't necessarily. But on the application, are you going to put 9? Starting well, at 9, or are you going to put 9 to 11? Or I, I, I want it to read a, a range. Because that, get, at least they know what the bottom line is, and then a possibility. Okay. So, so I would say 9 to $11 an hour. So, uh, okay, so what, what's your motion, Sarah? <laughs> yeah. My motion was to put the range to start at 9, but it's been modified. <laughs> <laughs> to start listing counselor set, uh, wage range um, from nine to eleven dollars. Second, and a second. <laughs> I voted really not here for you. Thank you. And she has a green pen. Awesome. So, all, all in favor? Uh, Aye. No names. Got it. All right. So the only question that Mark I had on the counselor position was um, the minimum qualification reads prior experience working with children is required. I put a big question mark on that because I was like, well, I don't know how many 16 year olds have prior experience. It might be a well, and are you really requiring it? Right. So I, I would, uh, and this also says two years prior camp experience, preferred. I mean, yeah, I guess that's preferred, mm -hmm. but that's also not necessary. So, um, <coughs> that we could change required there to preferred. Suggest. <laughs> But it's also like, what do you consider experience? Do you right. consider experience babysitting? Do you consider volunteering? Right. I went to camp when I was a kid. <laughs> That's experience. So I have okay. camps. Yep. Um, As a Girl Scout. <laughs> um, what do we think should happen with that wording? Should it just be preferred, or should we just... <coughs> See why we can't say suggested, and then you don't have preferred two sentences in a row. Go for it. It's hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have another word that they might want to use? Yeah. Preferred is good because you're consistent. Yeah. In your I don't know if we need the second sentence. We could just to two years camp experience preferred. I mean, I, I kind of like that. There. You did like that only because in the past there had been a director that was not taking, who was hiring out of town people over people who went to camp mm -hmm. at the school and lived in the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so if we don't care about being redundant, let's just make those two changes. Well, so what are you changing? Are you are you deleting that first sentence? Not change prior experience. Oh, not to require, but to prefer. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And, um, Thank you. 
anything else? You know where the CPR first aid class is required? Um, so if I was applying, I would think, oh, do I have to go and take those classes on my own? Yeah, or? that's very confusing. Yeah. I agree. So, um, Must be available to attend, you know. What's mm -hmm. uh, mandatory class um, participation? CPR first. That that could be um, a CPR first aid class um, preferred, but or acquired before start date. Yeah. What aren't we offering? Yeah, we're offering it. So if we are offering it, then you don't want them to worry or think I'm must, that. must. I never did that. Yeah. Must be able to attend camp CPR and first aid class. Yeah, I like that. Oh, yeah. Must be. Because didn't we have somebody last year that, <coughs> wasn't there somebody who wasn't available on that date and, you know, something happened? I don't know. Well, one, I don't know. I just remember when we were doing it at school. Oh. So maybe. Can you do an and or? So we could say CPR first aid yeah. required or attendance at um, Offered. participation in the camp run. Yeah. Certification. Yeah. And and just I don't know how you're doing it now, but I know before it was you either had to be certified first aid or CPR. Right. So how about must be available to at attend CPR first aid training unless otherwise mm -hmm. certified? Ooh, write that down, Caroline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's CPR or first aid because. They're not both, right? We prefer them to be both. But and it might happen this year that they are both. That well, and actually, as of last year, they are burnt. They were both right. because they was they, both, they both, like Yep. <laughs> yep. So I just talking about that reminded me about like incident reports when we're talking about first aid and stuff. So is that, for the Camp Raleigh director, is that covered under um, overseas camp counselors and stuff in accordance with town policies and procedures? Or it is that it on one of them because I read it. Okay. Complete incident and accident reports when necessary yeah. and performs and um, to the assistant director and informs the assistant rec director of any issues. So instead of assistant rec director, shouldn't that be Carolyn? Um, you have the fourth bullet point from the bottom? The fourth or fifth, yeah. Well, Six. They, they should tell the assistant. Well, I, add. I mean, that should, because... Well, this is the Camp Raleigh director. No, right. I know, but you should still know. Right. Yeah. Like, I would hope, I mean, <laughs> something happens to a student in school, we get told that, you know, so, uh, something happened. Well, Sally's not supposed to be running. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just, like... How do they know that it's supposed to go to Caroline? Or is that part of the main employee manual that said? So are you talking about incident reports? Like, yeah. I, um, yeah. The incident report one. So I would just say in the next line, camp directors are required to turn in the department's biweekly time cards, the town administrator will say, biweekly time cards and any Incident reports. But do you want those that day? Or you're not always here that day? Well, you are now. Maybe well, I am here every day, but you know, I, it can happen with the biweekly time cards. Well, well, no, it can't. Um, because <laughs> we have to deal with the time um, insurance right now. Yeah, I have five calendar days, not business days. I have five calendar days to report so any, <coughs> any kind of accident immediately. Um, so we need to write town admin in there. How about how about an informed assistant director, director and town administrator of any issues or concerns that may require immediate attention? You see where that's going. I 
Um, Sorry, you feel lucky watching me go back. Well, the other thing is, you know, I don't, like the first thing is, like, if you need to call an ambulance, you call an ambulance. <laughs> you know, like, but if, that's if, part if, of your first day training. I, I just don't I want them to get hung up on not, you know, following a process that, you know, costs I believe, valuable I time, know, you now, know. But for our first aid training that we had, <coughs> you get somebody in there and you fill an accident report after. Yes. I think it's fine to be, because you know, they, they need to let you know maybe by the end of the day. Right. It doesn't have to be. An and it doesn't necessarily have to be the director. They could tell the assistant director to contact you, couldn't they? Anybody can contact me, but I guess my point is, it depends on the severity of the incident. Right. But God forbid somebody dies. Yes, absolutely, yeah. call nine one one. But like the insurance needs to be like the second call that's made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or or if somebody's like really in a life, you know, threatening situation. Um, so. I guess I'm okay with it, you know, the way you're proposing and just adding the town administrator, as long as it's clear in training, well, not right. just in first first aid training, because you're right, they'll cover it. But are they going to connect the dots with, you know, how this how this applies to my job, you know? I think it should be contacts you, and then disperses appropriate information to camp employees. Well, because that's the other thing is that you might get into HIPAA stuff and you don't, you know, the camp director needs to know what's going on, but we need to also, people need to know to protect other people's privacy, minors particularly. Right, but if it's a matter of what they're allowed to do or not to do, then everybody should know. Yes. Anybody who's in charge of that kid. Yeah. Well, let's just remember that the above statements are intended to describe the general <laughs> nature and level of work being performed. Good job, Kelly. <laughs> It's just the job um, description, so we don't have to necessarily. All right, so crazy. let's. So I'm fine with you know informing the assistant rec director and then the town administrator because then, you know, I'm I'm hoping um, training and common sense will kick in. Yes. Because you know if they have to leave to deal with an incident, you really want your assistants to be able to step in and be aware of the situation and know how to deal with it. It's not necessarily wrong to put them first. It, it's just that it's hard to word this correctly for every scenario that could come Do up. Do they right. typically use their own phones? Especially, I know last year our phones were being replaced. But I know when I was there for my one day week with my little last worker student, the director and assistant director both left. The third person that they had was there, and a phone call needed to be made for a parent for a student who was having a meltdown because of thunderstorm, and they didn't know how to use their phone. They should have a cell phone. Well, that's what I'm saying. Are they expected to use their cell phones, or do they use their phones in the school? They the camp has a cell phone yeah. that we provide to the directors. Okay. I'm deeply troubled that you just told us that the director and assistant director were well, like, gone. That it, it wasn't you. It wasn't this <coughs> oh, but, but, you. but for safety's <laughs> sake, you know, a cell phone, you know, people, different people might carry it around who may or may not be present when you need them, and you may not know who has it right now. Mm -hmm. It would be very good common sense safety practice. So for, you know how to use phones. Yes, and I would say all the counselors. And it's not that much. It's not. That's what they think phones are now, and they're not. New phones don't, you don't dial on a new phone. One, one, or one, two. I might not even know that. I <laughs> don't have that line here either. So, um, but I, I would just add that to your training schedule. Make sure that everybody knows how to use the landlines. Yeah. And and what is the protocol about who has the phone and how do we know who has the phone and, and things like that for the cell phone? Just because that's an emergency lifeline. Yeah. That's what I mean. Well, all the counselors, too, are attached by radio. Yeah. So we have all the walkie-talkie. And then I believe it was just the director that had our cell phone. I think a lot of them had their own. Um, all right, are we on this one, the yeah. camp director? I think so. Yes. I think, is everybody good with the regular camp director and the camp broadly stuff? Yep. Yeah. OK, so now we're to team camp. Okay.
All right, so on the team camp um, listed here, the supervisor is listed, rec director is in, the, is in there, so my whole thing was, well, that doesn't belong there anymore. Did you get rid of that? Is that on there? Um, is that the team? Under the general supervision of the director. Wait. Okay. So this is out. Yeah. So it works on the general supervision of the of the. So yes, I have. That's the one that had lots of Celia comments. Yes. And you're all over them. Of the director. So who? So I assume that we still want to say kind of who the Camp Rally director, right? So that should be. <coughs> um, this one. Yeah. So instead of chairs, it should say delegate of the Camp Rally. Same as that. Whoever supervises the camp so the chairs. Did you write that down in the? She changed it to delegates tonight, so it'll be the oh, delegate yes. okay. of the committee, of the committee, of the rec committee, and then select board, right? Yeah. You got that one. Mm -hmm. Right, delegates. So that would be out, and then that would be delegates. Um, so that so on the first line that would be works on the general supervision of can we just write recreation committee there and select board of Rollinsford? Yes. Okay. Just as long as you all remember that that means yep. a delegate, you know. Yeah. Our committee <coughs> and select board. Thank you, Lori. Um, so the very next line reads, responsible for planning daily camp activities with the director's input and approval. I just said, responsible for planning daily camp activities and cross out the rest. So, but aren't we doing that to a certain extent? Doing what? Planning out what days the teens are going because we put it out already. Right. But they're still, they're ultimately, done. they're responsible. Okay. Like, we want to we wanna step back and take are supposed to be contacting and blah 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 if we don't have to make previous arrangements. So they're going to be like doing the bus and all of that yeah. for those and making yeah. sure that the bus is here on time and yeah. that they're committed appropriately. Yeah. Um, does anybody else have a hard time with the school aged youth? I, I, I don't know why that word bothered me, but it did. <laughs> this? I know, I just wrote teenagers. What about with, with um, youth? Youths. <laughs> or <laughs> putting in the age range. Yeah, how about 12 to whatever that is? Yeah. 12 to 15 year olds. Yep, good. 12 to 15 year olds. Okay. All right, then I was fine with a couple of couple of those and then down to uh, <coughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. eight. Required to perform daily check-ins, the filing of completed accidents reports are necessary and informing the recreation director of any issues or concerns that may require immediate attention. So, so, I, so it should not be the rec director there. Maybe would that be could you read it again? Town admin. That's what I said. Would you write town admin? Required to perform daily check-ins, the filing of completed Which we change. accident and incident reports when necessary, and informing the recreation director of any issues or concerns that may require immediate attention. So they're not really so reporting to the recreation <coughs> director there. Town so town admin there, informing the town admin. And, and I would just say that's part of training about, you know, what are they reporting to whom. Right. So, so town admin there. I hope you could read that. <laughs> Audio I will read it. Audio there. I'm sure I can. And then it said, then the next line is, required to document weekly staff hours and turn into the director for approval. So I wrote that again, town admin.
Well, that brings up an interesting point. It, it, time cards. It's just that w right now, it's just that one person's time. Right well, now, but I, they might have a counselor. In I, I process time cards. I don't approve them. Okay. Because I don't know that they were there for those hours. But she would be on the Or that they were scheduled for those hours. Like, I process them. So here's the, here's the thing. Um, counselors get their time cards signed by directors. Right. Directors in the past had their time cards signed by the ex officio, who would be Denise. So is that is that what the process was last summer? That's what 30? it was last summer. Okay. Um, because I don't, I don't know, you know, not, not that that's even perfect because the ex officio doesn't even necessarily know um, what they're doing. But, you know, it, it kind of, you know, it, it gives some semblance that they um, report to me, right. which which isn't <coughs> right. So you know, th have them hand them into me for process rather than approval. Um, processing for town men for processing. And just know, you know, we can talk about that again later. Like who signs who's pay who's time cards. Right. Yeah. Did that say was that on the director? Um. Rec director, um, no, required to turn in. Says, turn in. Yeah, just turning them in. To the town admin. Okay. So my question was on that: was, Do they both have to come over here, or can like the team camp director give hers to the camp role that, director? That's certainly fine, but just know that you're responsible for like the team director. You are responsible for making sure yours gets here. So if the director, the camp role director, is willing to take yours, that's all fine. But you know. I just was like, you're right, they don't have to make separate trips. Is it redundant for them to make separate trips? Well, that's not in here anyways. So well, <laughs> yeah, I would just say that a little <laughs> Okay. Um, acts as a liaison between the Recreation Department, camper, campers and parents, that was good. Um, what I was questioning is the next one, overseas camp counselor in accordance with town policies and procedures in the absence or at the direction of the counselor. So I was saying that just get rid of it in the, get absence. In the absence of, or the direction, yeah, get and remove that. And then I, <coughs> I actually crossed out the S in counselors. I mean, I don't, I guess we could leave it there. We could put parentheses, right? Because they would start with one. I mean, well, it would be a lovely pop to think that we would need more than that, but <laughs> we'll be happy if we have one. All right, and then um, must be available for all seven weeks of camps. So that is very important, that last line. Is it eight, seven? Yes, seven. And that's all I have. I'm going to over see if all of yours was in there. Um, let's see if you can read what I said. I don't know if you, I mean, you're here, so you should be able to you would probably know what I'm attempting to write anyway. Before I forget, because I will, um, our next meeting is the 27th. Um, and Rich is willing to come for the first part of it, because now that the budget's been passed and everything, that he can talk more about location and what. Ooh, that would be awesome. What needs to be done. He just wanted to know. He wanted me to put it out there. No, so that's I go back awesome. And to come. Yeah. I think we were at 6 p.m., right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, that to, so let me, can I just confirm that? You're meeting on the 27th, which is a Wednesday? Yeah. At uh, 6? Six? 6. 6, okay. <coughs> Was there any stipulation? Does anybody remember that about Denise on, on a Wednesday? No, because it budget stuff is over. As long there. as there's no budget. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, we had Wednesday, with possibly Thursday, but I know I can't be there, neither can he on it. Yeah, I can't be there Thursday, I'm but Thursday. I'm getting my taxes done. I'll be crying on Thursday. I the school board meeting will stick up. My one concern is um, last year you were there a lot for a volunteer. Uh, do, do you, then do you become a counselor? And this is totally 
probably off subject, but then do you act as the camp counselor and they oversee you? So should it say camp counselor slash volunteers? No. Because <laughs> <laughs> you would be the only volunteer. There wouldn't be anything. Well, Who else has got to do that crazy stuff? I don't think you want to have volunteers like that. Because they don't necessarily have to be trained. They can get into that whole thing of are we running on volunteers or are we actually paying people? True. So I did the, enjoy driving my van last year. The hours, are we keeping them 9 to 4? Since we added that they must be here for all check in and check out, or do we want to add like a half an hour? We want to do 8:45 to 4:15. I'm good with that. Well, let's make that 8:45 to 4:15, and then that will at least because we do have that budget in our weekly budget certainly. Is that just for the team camp? That is director? just for team camp. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think I think that is Saint Vinny on that one. So we need to. Okay. So if we're good with everything, right? Yeah. Are you good with the salary for that one? Yes, because I I'm okay with that. Okay. I make a motion to amend all job descriptions as work out tonight. Okay. Amend and accept. All in favor? Aye. So, aye. Descriptions. And you? You don't want to be working. I no, I have. Right. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we do have another, one other grant proposal that we need to work through that Celia has worked through. Um, here, um, Caroline and I had a great discussion on Thursday, so we're just going to, and I, I texted you that, although half of it went <laughs> through and half of it didn't. What, and did you get the part about the tech, do you have the movie thing? Yeah. You have the movie thing? Because somebody brought up to oh, me I, about the movie thing that they said, why do you have to have a copyright because it is not a public showing? It is a private showing to our campers who have paid money to come to camp. Well, you can't use it if somebody's paying money. They can come to camp. So you can't use the license if somebody's come paying for it through this company. You have to go through a different company to get the license. So they can't. So I, I think you're going to get yourself into a mess. Okay. The only way I think you could watch a movie without paying for the license is if you watched it through cable and it was getting broadcast at that time and you're sitting through the commercials. Okay. Well, so I just wanted to bring up what this person said it. to me. And I said, well, no, that's a good point. Let me ask. <laughs> so when you, it's worth it. when yeah, you it's have good. a streaming service like Netflix or you own the DVD Blu-ray at home, that's for your personal in-home use only. The moment you show it to a group outside of your home, it becomes an issue. Okay. And you are in violation of the copyright. Because when you bought that, you bought it just to do it in your home for you and your family or friends. The moment you get out of your home, it's not. Okay. This movie license, it was pointed out by the select board, because I put in a grant that we'd be willing to show work with other groups like the grant provider and stuff. To do that, when um, the select board chair pointed out to me that it says, it has to be in the licensed facility only. Okay. So it could only be at the school because that's where we're using it. We couldn't do movies with oh, at, the uh, at the library. We couldn't do movies at the Wentworth House. We couldn't do movies at the fire department because that's not the facility that is licensed. Okay. So I just wanted to clarify that we actually like a needed it. Period, right? That's all I wanted to clarify is that we actually needed it. Okay. So we do need to ask for that money. What what I wanted to see on the grant. Um, is to be more generic so that we're not, um, <coughs> you know, beelined into having to ask for this particular program because for whatever reason, if that program falls through, then we don't have it. Well, so what Caroline and I had talked about was a programming, generic programming, and maybe list several options. So yes, there's 
New development. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I thought I was right there with you. No, you were really close. <laughs> um, we did have a great conversation, yeah, and we got good. closer still. Um, <laughs> I've since talked to Denise. Um, the Rollins, so when you apply for any kind of grant, um, and we had a conversation. I think we covered this. You, you need to ask for something that falls within the mission of the granting organization. So what I mean to say is apparently, I, I, I don't know much about the Rollins Heart Education Foundation except to say that they have always funded the school play. Um, Denise says that they sponsor arts for children. So the theater at the school certainly falls within arts. Um, allowing kids to watch movies really doesn't. So she She's not the sole decision maker, but she's hoping this group will not include movies because she does not believe movies is going to be approved. Oh, interesting. So, um, she also said that you should be as specific as possible because, so Kelly and I had talked about, you know, we could ask for money that says programming that <coughs> would be this thing, that thing, or some other thing, and, and list some specific things, not being sure what might actually happen. Um, she discouraged that as well, and again, reiterating that it has to be arts related. So then the doodle bugs thing, that we that did that before. That worked well, because yeah. that was artsy. Right. It was a creative thing. She did say, though, that she felt the Paul Wentworth house, albeit a little bit of a stretch, can probably work, because you can probably talk about how people created things and crafted things at that time and make it related to art. And when they went there last time, they did stamping, like fabric stamping and stuff like that. And um, so, yeah. we. Because I, I even did a little, I had, um, I was somewhere and I picked up a card. Now I wonder what if this would be considered, and I looked up his stuff, like the magician dude. You know, magic, Fred. magic Fred. You know, it was like two fifty to three fifty for him to come in. So I'm like, pretty sure the Education Foundation. I don't know if your kids may have been there. That we had a storyteller come in. Maybe he came in and he he did storytelling with the whole school, and then he took like maybe some like of the kids, sixth graders, and worked on like yeah. a workshop. I yes. remember that it was like a workshop. Yes, but I think I think to your point, if I can extrapolate on, on what you said, is that um, it's not so much a passive experience, but kids actively mm -hmm. themselves engaging in, our, in, in an artistic thing. So, you know, is the magician going to stay and teach them how to do some magic? You know, like there's that could be closer. There, there's a part of it that, that actually he does that program. It's like that. It costs a little bit more, but it's like, I don't know, 45 minutes of a show or something like that, and then the last 15 or it takes 15 or a half hour and he, he teaches kids. That's, that would be that more qualifiable, would be I think, than just having a magician, a magician come and do a show. Right. Okay. So, so think about your organization, who they are. They all have to have a mission statement. Find their mission statement so you can make sure that your ask is congruent with who they are. So, we, so we're really not helping. Uh, so my... Or this right we need to take the the <laughs> REF. We have to take the movie part out. Wow. Right. And th do we want? I I forwarded today. I don't know if people saw it or not. I did that time. I'm sorry. Just I, I took out the movie part. <laughs> mm -hmm. I took out the, so that you had one or the other. arch, and you could do one or the other, or we could go ahead with it duplicated. So if if we do the arch, it would be four hundred and fifty dollars um, for sixty kids to go over there. And do like so three. right here. Forty-five minute magic show, fifteen minute magic lesson with giveaways. Shows me here. So, do we want? To, my question is: Do you want to continue with the four hundred and fifty dollars ask for the Wentworth House and represent it to the select board tomorrow for approval? Because they have to be the ones to submit the grant and sign off as our official agent. And just stick with the wet one house, or do you want to add in? Because we well, at this point, I'd love to add in. I mean, do what what, what's our what's our max? What is the max they give a thousand? I think we. Should, I mean, why not ask for a thousand? 
or we could do this for 350 or, or we could do um, doodle bug. Yeah. Like, yeah, my kids love the doodle bugs thing. So. so she also said, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and again, she's not the sole decision maker on, on that body, but that um, there was a tendency on behalf of the people at RGS um, to, because a lot of their requests would come by way of people at RGS, that those requests would be the same year after year, that there was some kind of thing that everybody liked to do, or liked that they did, so they would try to ask for that every year. And that the point, I think you will find very often with nonprofits who grant grants, um, not to say that they never repeat the same thing, but the idea is to fund something that wouldn't otherwise happen and to expose them to things that they wouldn't otherwise get exposed to. So that if you're doing the same thing all the time, yeah. you know, yeah, you could argue that, you know, third graders never experienced that as a third grader before, but, you know, are they doing it every year and they did it as a second grader and as a first grader? And they did, the blue book, they didn't read for two. Right. Okay. So, I, so I, maybe not. I, I don't think that's going to, you know, based on what, like, what she's trying to say about new things. So maybe we do the magic guy mm -hmm. for 350. Yeah, do you have... I mean, I guess you should name him, but name. But like, if you can't get him, then you ask him some money that. Well, see, that's the problem I have with specific things because. Well, I would just uh, say a musician, a, a, a magician. A I, musician? I would, magician. <laughs> you can have a typo in there. I have to, you know. Um, <laughs> if you ask for a magician for a certain amount of money, then that gives you flexibility with who you hire. There may be a chance and, that you can find another you can one. And put in there. You know, show up with a whole group and a lesson for right. class so then it's three fifty. And he doesn't charge for travel, you know, right? So are we and so um so yeah, I guess I go with the movie out. The movie's out. Keep arch. Yeah. Um we we had didn't do doodle box two years ago. We did it two years ago, 2017. Not we didn't last do it last year? year? No, because none of the funding came through for it. But you did it in the winter. But we did it at Christmas time. Oh, with the leftover true. money. Okay. <coughs> well, that's fine. Let's go with um, let's go with an add in a magician. Here you want that? Mm -hmm. Sure. So <laughs> whatever you could do to like talk about how this supports their mission of kids getting exposed to and interacting with arts. And, and I would see if you can find their mission statement <coughs> verbatim somewhere so that you can really speak to it. Um, but why you're at, you know, how you think that your ask is part of what something that they should be willing to support, you know? And do we want to go up to the max? I don't know if, it, if they're asking for specific money, I don't know how. That would be up that. to 800. So right well, now you're at 450 plus 350 is 800. Yeah. So how would you do that? They do not look like it. Right. They can also, you know, because you're asking for two specific things, they can do the whole thing, or they can do, do one part or the other, and you at least have, you know, enough to do one or the other. Right. So, I have this list of activities, and if I want to continue to write grants, we need to decide what is our top priority for activities to come in. Last year, the grant that came in went towards science, more general, it's science yeah. slash anti-bullying program, and they gave us a thousand out of fifteen hundred, and we brought in the Mount Washington um, Observatory for two shows, and then we brought in STEM for the summer. Did they require any kind of documentation about what happened with the money? They did not. I asked two or three times. Okay, but just be aware that. You know, sometimes they'll ask for a report of this is what we did, this is how it went. Maybe take pictures, you know, with parent permission and all and that. Of the REF whole thing. does. So that you can document that you're, you know, that you spent the money, not, not just like with an invoice, like, yeah, we spent the money, <coughs> um, but that the experience was what we were purporting it to be, which does support their mission. 
which was difficult with the grant we got last year because although I asked the camp staff to take pictures, I never got the pictures of when these two groups actually came into the summer camp. So we have no visual, unless like your kids did the STEM in the summer. I don't know if you got any pictures. I don't think I took any pictures. Um, I happened to be there that day. And I uh, happened to show up early because there was an issue going on at the school we got word about. So I'm like, oh, can I go take pictures? And they're like, oh, no, we're doing that. And they never got forwarded to anybody. So, so I've asked a couple So times. that ought to get passed down to directors. The, um, you know, the consequences of, of grants and, and reading the grants thoroughly to make sure that you are following through whatever with whatever it is that they require because they may in fact require pictures or something. And REF requires like, pictures and or a letter explaining how it went at the end and what the kids took away from it. So I have, a, I can forward this out and we can, I'd like to get some grants going before the next meeting, but I don't know. Um, that, that's possible. So I guess I'll forward out the list and people can look it over. We can, I'll look at mission statements. Should that be a part? Because well, I think that's going to guide who you're asking for, right. for what. Right. Because is, is our March 27th date too late for you to just. And I was having a conversation with Dee about that. Is that. Oh, what we ran into last year yeah. was the timeline of if a lot of these banks, um, like, what is it? There's two or three of them that just opened in Dover, the one where Fiddlehead Farms used to be um, and stuff. They run on a quarterly basis. So they have to be s submitted to the select board before March 31st so that then they can be submitted to the okay. grant company. And the 31st is a Sunday, so that really means the 25th is your last op opportunity. And the select board is having a very abbreviated meeting on the 25th. So yeah. the 27th means that they'll get signed on April 1st. They'll go to the grantors, and we won't know until July 1st yeah. uh, whether or not we got them, which means we start camp without knowing if any of these come through. I can work on other ones like ones that require 60 to 90 days and get them going now and we might know ahead of time but the ones that run on quarterly basis we won't necessarily know mm -hmm. and a couple i like one of them like you submit by the end i don't know if it's the end of march or the end of april you find out may 15th oh that one's good yeah but so that's what I was thinking, and that that's what we run into an issue with. Do you know how many? Like, let's let's just say in the abbreviated meeting on March 27th that they would like. What are you talking about? How many grants would you even be thinking at this point in time? Would they be one or two? Probably two. I'd shoot four. But if I get them written, I could. Um, the, it, they need to come here first and then go to the select board so that we're not so backtracking and so going to have to meet before the 27th. And you're going out of town, but I'm just wondering yeah. what, <laughs> what we think would be our top priorities. I mean, so that really means you're meeting again this week. Because, you know, otherwise, you know, because the 25th is Monday, you know. Right. And like Eastern Bank, every year they pick one thing they focus on. Last one year it was immigrants. They focused on immigrants. And they only gave the, the majority of the grants out to people who uh, offered assistance to immigrant groups. Um, one year it was all about women, empowering women through them. Um, Walmart has a list of eight categories, which none of them we qualified for. So we, and that's up to $2,500. But we can go to the store and ask for up to two hundred or five hundred dollars in gift cards at the Walmart store in Summersway. But like one of Walmart's is nutrition and financial assistance for low-income families, and we don't provide meals, so we can't provide the nutrition. 
and we don't really provide financial assistance to 80% of our people, so we're just qualified. Well, I, I think it's unfortunate that we might be falling into the time frame again, but at this point in time, I don't see how we're going to meet again before the March 27th. So, you know, I, I Yep, so we'll just go with it, we'll roll with it. Yeah. So that's my, that's my two cents. So, in, um, I'll make myself a list. And that, and that grant on the, is that big on our agenda for the 27th? I mean, we definitely want, want Rich, um, he's going to be our first part of that meeting, so. Um. If I can write them um, for a couple ahead of time, I will try and get them out to you, and you guys can just say yes or no. Mm -hmm. We think this is a good idea, let's move forward. Okay. And then they could go to the board the following week. That would be great. If that makes sense. Yeah, because yeah, mm -hmm. you, know you know what you're doing and you have good feel for it. Yeah, but I mean we can try Dick's again asking for more sporting equipment. Mm -hmm. And that's like a Well, so just be careful because we don't want to repetitively ask. Them. Well, you know, th th there's that. You also, you know, um, more sporting equipment, but you know, you should be specific in a grant. And would this group want you to buy a volleyball net or a croquet set? You know, like we really need soccer balls. Well, but you need you need to you know, like it's one thing to decide. We support the idea of a grant vaguely sporting equipment. That sounds great, but you've got to get the will of this group on what specifically are you asking for, and you have to be careful about. Um, It's, it's one thing to say this looks great, you know, pass it on to the board. Um, but, but that's more about like the technicalities of language and not really content. You know, if, if you ought to just, you need to talk about content here and make sure that everybody's on board with, it's a croquet set, that's what we're getting, you know, and then, so that you know how to write your language based on croquet set because that would be different than a volleyball net. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, you know, if you're going to approve something via email just to get to you to the next step, that's not an awesome way to do it and, it, and it can get you into trouble. It's not very transparent, but you're not really getting the motion here that says, we supported the idea of a croquet set when she really thought we were getting a volleyball net and you don't, you know. Look at our ping pong table over there, speaking of dicks. <laughs> Do we still have it? Did we throw that away? I don't know, but it was in bad shape. <coughs> I just threw it away. I don't know. I, I think we, when we did it, was the hockey tables that were bad. Yeah, I think we, we threw those away. Sure. When I was there, the student I was with was in second grade, and he is now in or 11th grade, oh. it was like duct tape together. Yeah, 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 yeah I thought we'd get rid of all those things. I know we took a couple of those to the mill, but yeah, what were those things called? Those balls? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, do we want to say, if I, somebody would come in and do a we, there's two or three groups that could come in and do a wildlife show. I think I think everybody's into that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I think that would Those be very popular. Yeah. Um, I think the STEM we all would, liked it too. I yeah. still would love to get that. Um, Chris. He's on the list. Chris. The, the bike. The bike yeah. guy. Yeah. Because he's the inspirational speaker as well. Yeah. I just think the kids will get a lot out of that. Crispy. So, at, do we want to do something artsy like um, doodle bugs again, or for, from a different organization, or um, paint for fun, paint for fun mm -hmm. or um, artists from the mill to come in? Ooh. So, like an art workshop. 
And then do you want to do like a science? If somebody's like, you said the STEM, Kelly. Is everybody else into science or not? Uh, there like, was, I think a lot of the kids like the STEM thing, but it, did we have an opportunity for UV STEM on the... Um, somebody from the shipyard can yeah. come up. If we can contact somebody from there. Yeah, we could do the STEM. Kathy, do you want to be in touch with that? What? Do you know anybody at the shipyard? Yeah. <laughs> I do know a few. Yeah. What do you need? Uh, one of our members said that oh, they remember, offer yeah. the free STEM yeah. right. in the shipyard. And I know the Elliott Library, or not the Elliott, the South Borough Library uses them. Yeah. Hmm. I don't yeah. know if I know anyone higher up like that. Anthony's a painter, so I don't I think. I can check with Ryan Cajun. We're putting, we're putting YouTube on that one. He teaches at the shipyard. Oh, really? Yeah, once we teach some of the shipyard stuff. Some math stuff. Yeah, I, I want to work on um, getting people in for free. You know, yeah. People volunteer. But it's dumb. Are you talking about other people? Yeah, other people. <laughs> other people, too. <coughs> well, if you need, like, um, if you can get somebody to come in and do a cooking class, Bread Mall Farm has offered ingredients to us. Oh, they did last year. Mm -hmm. That's really mm -hmm. And Homegrown Eats said that they would do a cooking class, but they limit theirs to 12 to 15 and we have to pay for it. The kids at the time, so um, we're looking to see if the team can't cook it in there. My, my lady that did the, the cupcakes or whatever that, oh, her, yeah. she might be willing to do something like that too. And on the flyers going out, it says, your talents or your services. So if we get any of those emails of people contacting us, you could pick them up and, yeah. and schedule them. I love that. Mm -hmm. so, All right, do we have anything else? Because I really, I really have to go. No, <laughs> Kathy. Are we, um, are we are I'm ready? done. Okay. So, so Celia, if you can get me a copy of, um, the revised ARIA grant um, for Monday, then I will um, print it for them. For tomorrow? Yes. For tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Have a safe trip. 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 Have a safe trip.